What's up, everybody? My name is Ryan Dowdall. I'm the TD here at the Power Place Church, and today I want to go over snare drum. My goal in this video is to demystify the worship snare drum, rock snare drum, a pro snare drum, how to take care of it, how to tune it, what to look for when you need to change heads, how to put the strainers on, and all the different things that go into taking care and maintaining your snare drum. So let's talk about when to change your snare drum heads. Now, this will vary depending on how hard or soft your drummers play, where they play. Some drummers are very consistent and play the center, as they should, and some drummers, every now and then, they're hitting the sides of the, uh, the snare drum. And if they do that, you might need to change your heads a little bit quicker than if they hit the center. So the snare drum we've got here today is a Ludwig Black Beauty. It's a 14 by 8 really, really great brass snare drum. And we've got a power stroke coated on our top head. And you can see in this situation, our drummers are very consistent here at the power place and they nail this center dot pretty much all the time. However, you can see around it, there's quite a few marks. And if you look at your heads like this, if you can see bumps and divots, you need to change your head because it's not gonna give you the response that you want anymore. So let's change this snare head. Here's some tools and some gadgets that I use when I tech a snare drum and I'm changing heads and working on it, whatever I'm doing. I use these lug locks. I think they're called tune locks. Uh, I don't remember who makes them, but you can get them at any music store, Guitar Center, Sam Ash, uh, online, you get them on Amazon, super cheap. Um, and these will help at the end of the tuning process to keep your drum in tune once you have it where you want. I also use these Evans tone rings because they help muffle the snare drum. They help dampen it and get the sound that we're looking for a little bit easier. You're gonna need some snare wires. I like the Pure Sound snare wires and we are using 40 strand snare wires today because we want a very responsive snare. You're gonna need a drum key. I have this one here that was lying around and we'll use this one today. Any drum key will work. Drumsticks, drumsticks. I also highly recommend getting a TuneBot. This is the studio model, so the TuneBot Studio. This will help you really fine tune your snare drum, find a place that works for you, and then be able to consistently keep your drum in that place week to week. And probably the most important thing, you need a new drum head. So I'm using the Remo Power Stroke P4 Coated. Love this head. Um, super, super great sounding snare head. So let's change these heads. So when I am changing a head on the snare, I always start with the bottom head. The bottom head on the snare is the most important, uh, it's the most important head. If your bottom head is not tuned correctly, your snare is never gonna sound right. Your bottom head you want pretty tight, uh, tighter than you would think to really get the snares to respond and to feel right. Uh, a lot of drummers keep their, they want a deep snare sound, like a typical rock snare is a really deep, fat snare, and a lot of drummers will keep their heads really low, but that's not really how you get that sound. You get a good rock snare sound by keeping the top head medium tuning, the bottom head tight, and then some good EQ and compression on your sound console and really hitting the center and rim shots and that kind of thing, that's gonna give you the sound that you want. And miking is really important, and we'll get into that later. So for the bottom head, I'm gonna do this one from scratch. So this is already pretty good. You can hear it's pretty high. I am going to put this loose. All right, so this head is now pretty loose. You can see it's nice and wrinkly. It's got a lot of play in it. So what I like to do is I like to press down with my body weight. In, you're gonna to wanna to press down in between two lugs and finger tighten the lug as hard as you can. And you're gonna to wanna to do that on the whole drum before you move on to actually bringing the drum up. This is gonna give you a really even starting point because you weigh the same. Your weight doesn't change as you go around the drum. So finger tight with body weight is the same. It's a really fast, easy way to do it. So now that we've gone around the drum and we've gotten it tight with our body weight, 
you just want to go around one more time and make sure all the lugs are still where you had them. Looks good. So, you want to make sure there's no wrinkles. If there's a wrinkle, just I usually just grab my drum key and the two lugs where that wrinkle is, I just tighten a little bit until the wrinkle goes away. So this is nice and smooth, and you can hear it's pretty high. That one's a little low. It kind of sounds like a timpani a little bit. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna crank it. So we're gonna go a full two turns on every lug. And something I like to do, because it's really easy to lose your place, is I like to flip the drum over and align the head logo to a lug and start on that lug so I know when I get back to the logo, I'm done. So we're gonna go one, two turns. Two turns on every lug. Which is pretty tight. It's really gonna sound great. Just want to bring it up to as close of uniform pitch as you can. It's a little hard to hear the uniform pitch of the bottom because it's so cranked down. I like to use the bottom of the drum key. You hear that one's a little lower. And sometimes if this is low, it's the one across from it on all of them. That feels nice. So that's the bottom head. Now if we take our tune bot and we check on it, we want to get around 340 to 450 hertz. That's kind of the usable range of the bottom head for me. So let's put this guy on there. And I'm going to take my drumstick because it helps this get a better reading. But you want to be very careful when you hit this head because you don't want to hit it too hard and dent the bottom head. You can see we're at 400 hertz exactly. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to make sure each lug is even. 400. That one's registering 200, so on the tune bot, I can go to one that I know is good. and Hit the filter button and it's going to look for that on everything. 400. We're good. And sometimes it has a hard time getting a reading because the head's so tight. I just move it over. 400. So far, every lug has been 400. That is 337. So this one needs to come up. It could be this one. Yep. Cool. They're at 400. 
So this bottom head is right where I want it. And you can hear, it's very, very high. Super, super high. That's gonna get you the response that you want. So now let's do the top head. Now before we take this head off, I wanna let you know that I like to align my logos on the top and bottom head to the same place. I think it looks really nice, and when all the drums have that, it's just a really great, great visual, especially if your drums are gonna be on camera and your cam ops are gonna be up over the drum. Having that logo there really helps online look nice. But when we mic the snare drum, we're gonna mic it in line with the strainers. So whichever way the strainers are going, that's where our mics are gonna be pointed. And so typically when you're on a drum kit and your snare's right in front of you, you got your rack tom and your floor tom, maybe a ride cymbal and like a, a standard four piece setup, your crash cymbal that's right here, I usually will align that mic right there. So I point my strainers kind of at a 45 leaning to the left. So that looks like this. You can see the throw and the butt are here. Yeah, right here. And the logo is straight up from them. That's gonna let you put the logo straight away from you when you sit down at the kit and your strainers are gonna be facing the way that you want. So let's take this head off. I'm gonna loosen all these lugs. So now I've got all of those lugs nice and loose. We can take the hoop off. I always recommend when you put it down, lean it to one side. You don't lose any of your lugs. So we can take the old head off. You can really see this one's pretty beat up. Goodbye, beat up head. And then what I like to do is I like to just go over it, make sure that there's no glue residue. Sometimes you get glue residue on the edges. You can scrape it off with your finger now. Or use a sponge or something, but I'm not gonna go get a sponge. I'm just gonna use my fingernail. And then you take your new head, and remember, we're gonna align the bottom logo with the top logo, keeping in mind where we want our strainers when we sit down at the drum kit. So I want my strainers at a 45. So this one goes straight across at this top lug here. Now, that's where it's gonna sit. Before we do that, Remo heads in particular, they have a ton of glue around the edge. So you can actually take your thumb and you can brace the glue all around the edge. And that's kind of a safe way to do it. But there's another way that's even better that might be scary, but I promise it'll work. So we put the head on, we're gonna take our hoop and we're gonna put it back on. And before you put the hoop back on, I also recommend you just take it, and you give it a little bit of a slide. It helps it get seated right in there. I find holding the hoop and threading each lug in just a bit before I center everything and make sure that it's good helps me to avoid losing all of the lugs to the floor when I try to put it back on. We're not trying to go all the way in, just, just thread it, one or two threads. And that's gonna let us really work with it and make sure that it's centered on our drum. Like that. And now I'm gonna finger tighten all of these lugs. And now that I have it finger tight, I'm actually gonna take my drum key, and I'm just gonna crank this top head a ton. Now a lot of people will do it in a star pattern. Um, I'm not actually tuning the drum at this point. I'm just trying to secure it to the head. 
or to the drum, that secure the head to the drum. And I'm just gonna make this super tight. You can hear all the glue breaking as I do it. We wanna get as much of that glue broken up or the snare drum's not gonna sound right. Sometimes you might get weird resonances. So I'm breaking up all that glue. And I'm just, I'm really going until it's all the way down. Until it's really fighting me turning it. That's how I know it's tight enough. Super tight. And then this is how you break the glue. You just stand on it. You stand on the drum, you jump up and down a little bit, and you walk around in a circle until you hear all of that glue no longer breaking. And then you get off, because it's a snare drum. You're supposed to play it, not stand on it. And then you bring it all back loose. Now, if you have a wood snare, maybe don't stand on it or stand on it. It's probably strong. This is brass. This is metal. It's not going to move. So now that they're all loose again, make them all finger tight. And now that they're all finger tight, we're going to do the same thing we did to the bottom head with our body weight and finger tight. We're going to do the same thing to the top head. So push on it with all your weight and finger tight. And then move on to the next one. So I started with this one. I'm gonna check it again. And you'll notice they're all staying pretty much where they were. Because we used our body weight it's nice and even across the whole drum. So from there, I'll go pick a lug to start with and I will go a quarter turn to a full turn past finger tight with all my body weight. And don't go left, because left is loosey. Righty tighty. Started on that one. Let's see where we are. So these ones are low. This one's low. So I'll pick the highest one usually and make them all match that one. Which seems to be that one. Pretty close, and then I'll bring the tune bot in, and I'm looking for the frequency of the drum to be around 240 hertz on the ring of the snare. Or sorry, not 240, 200 hertz. 200 hertz on the ring is going to give you a nice fat snare drum when you go to play it. Anywhere from 150, 160 to 200 is where you want to be. So I'm actually going to bring the drum down a little bit.
still going to bring it down. And you'll notice I'm bringing all the lugs down the same amount in order to keep the drum at the same pitch. There we go. That's close to 200. So this is 218. I'm going to keep it here and I'm going to check all the lugs and make sure they're the same. 217, so let's bring that up. So that one's a little low. So because this was low and I made this one higher, now that I made this one higher, this one's higher as well. Because kind of across from the drum they have a relationship with each other. So I'm going to bring this one down a little bit. Bring this one up a little bit. And now they're the same. You hear that one fell out. So this one's giving me a little bit of a funny reading. And sometimes there's overtones in the drum. It could be for a number of different reasons. I'm not gonna worry too much about one reading that's kind of really different. If I can feel that the tension's the same and I can hear that the general pitch is in the right area, as I start turning this up, the one across when it gets really bad. So that's where this one should be. This one's a little low. So I need to bring this one up, this one down. Great. I might bring it down a little bit more. I'm not concerned with making them all the same exact, you know, area on the tuning needle that this has. It's more so that they're in the same you know, frequency range, plus or minus three or four cents. Um, so let's just go once over and check to make sure we're at uniform pitch. Sounds great. So that is where I will typically live for the top snare. So let's move on to actually putting our snare strainers on the bottom head. So for the snare strainers, you need your strainers, and you need your little, sometimes they come with uh, string, sometimes they come with cloth, sometimes they come, in this case, Pure Sound sends them with plastic. I like the plastic because it doesn't break. Um, and so you're going to put these guys on each of the strainers. Now it's important when you lay the strainers on, some of them are shaped differently than others. If you see these two little indents in the side that go up, you want those indents going away from the top of the head. If they're facing the head, it's gonna sound really weird because it's upside down, but it's also gonna pierce the head if you make the strainers really tight. And then your bottom head needs to be replaced and you have to do this whole thing over again. We don't wanna do that. So you wanna lay it flat. Make sure that any indents that it does have are going away from the drum. That's going to let them sit properly. So take your little plastic pieces. You want to go on each one, kind of thread it through, and then go in. On this side, we'll do the same thing. I'm going to thread it through, and then thread it through the actual rim of the drum. Now I'm going to flip it around because I like to start with the throw side first because that's going to let me fine tune this adjustment later. So I'm going to get this where I need it, which is you want to make sure that it's centered with the other one or centered over top of the drum and straight in line with the other one. You want to make sure it's not tilted to one side or bending. 
These are the things we want to look for when we put this on. Putting the strainers on wrong will massively affect the responsiveness, the feel, the decay. It'll really affect the overall final sound of your snare in a negative way. So we want to put these on right. You can see on your drum, there's this bearing edge. Right where the bearing edge ends is where I like to put the curve of that strainer. And then what I do is you make sure that the throw little locking mechanism is undone. You take this plastic piece, you make sure that you have it pulled through evenly so you don't have one side not pulling the same. In this case, it is not even. So I'm gonna pull some back through and get those nice and even, like, like that. I don't know if you can see that, but it's nice and even. And then I take that and I'm going to, while holding this strainer where it goes so that it can't move, I'm gonna insert that into this plate. This can be a little tricky doing it with one hand, especially on like the Ludwig drums where it's at an angle, so it kind of wants to close by itself. So I'm gonna do one at a time where it's a little bit easier, like that. So I'm gonna make sure again this whole time that I'm keeping this straight, centered with the rim, centered in this little gap. And I'm gonna go in and when it's where I want it, I'm gonna pull, first I'll tighten this up just a little bit, not all the way. Not fully tight, but I'm gonna actually pull up on it and create a crease there. That's gonna let me know where that goes next time I take it off, which is really, really helpful. And then I'm gonna make sure this is where I want it. You wanna make sure that on your throw mechanism, you're kind of in the middle. You don't wanna have it too tight or too loose. You wanna give yourself some room to work with. And when it's nice and straight, nice and centered and where you want it, then you can take your drum key and you can lock down each side. Now I don't go completely locked down on each side initially. I will turn one a little bit and turn one a little bit and go back and forth until it's tight. Because I don't want to lock one and twist this plastic piece. So I'll lock that one down and lock that one down. Now this one is exactly where I want. And that gives me enough room to put this one centered where I want. Same exact way through this butt plate. I'll flip it around. Through the butt plate and I'm making sure that it's just like this one that we did over here. I'm making sure it's centered and not off to one side. Making sure the plastic pieces are in evenly. I'm doing the same thing. I am making that crease in there, which helps me next time I have to put this on. If for some reason I change the amount of snare wires or I need to take it off, whatever I need to do, lets me know where I had it. And then I'll go usually with my fingers and then I'll grab the drum key and go the rest of the way. Again, making sure that that is straight, not off to one side. Little by little on each side until we're ready to crank it down. And that's going to give us a pretty loose snare. But now, it gives me room to pull it and then fine tune the center by just loosening it, which would be to the left. Just needs to come back a little bit. Sometimes unthrowing the, or throwing, I don't know what the proper terminology on that would be, but loosening the wires will let you loosen it a bit easier. And then you can pull it back. Something like that. Maybe a little bit more to the left. So let's see where we're at with our drum.
sensing here there's a lot of ring. That's what this is for. So I like to just throw this guy on there. And you have enough room now to play with this. So unthrow the snares. If you want to loosen it a bit, you can. Or you can tighten it. And it's a really nice place to start and it gives you some wiggle room to fine tune the length of your snare. So the last thing that I like to do, once I have the drum, usually on its stand, at the kit, mic'd up, ready to go, and I fine tune the tuning on you know, a Sunday morning or before a show or an event or whatever you're doing, I'll take these lug locks, which are super, super cool, and I will place them right on the lug so that this fat side is stopping it from turning to the left. That's gonna keep your drum from going out of tune pretty effectively. And you can use these and tune the snare maybe once a week, which is really, really nice. So I'll put those on every single lug. Again, stopping it from turning to the left, which is what loosens the snare. Snares don't really go higher, they go lower when they detune. So that's all the lug locks for the top head. I will also put them on the bottom head because I don't want that especially to go flat. And then we've got our lug locks on the bottom head. So now that we've got our top head on, our bottom head nice and tight, our strainers on, they're nice and centered, our lug locks are in where they go on the lugs, locking it, sounds like this. So let's talk about snare miking because this is gonna make a huge difference in how your snare sounds. So here at the Power Place, we like to use a Shure SM57 for the top and a Shure 545 for the bottom. I think the current production model is the 545 SD, I think is how it's marketed. So if you're searching for it, you'll find it with that. One of the most important things is that you mic your snare in line with the strainers, like we talked about when we aligned the logos for the heads. This is what that would look like. So we have the 57 at the top, and we have the 545 on the bottom. You can see the 57 is pointed straight across the drum, angled down just a little bit to where they hit in the center. And this 545 is angled almost at the same spot, but at a 45 degree angle towards the center. But it is picking up all of that beautiful rattle and the response of those snares. So this is what the snare drum sounds like when it's mic'd up this way. If the mic isn't in line with the strainers, this is what that would look like. You can see the strainers are not going the same direction that the mics are looking towards. And this is an example of what it would sound like if the mics were not in line with the strainers. As always, making sure that we maintain the proper phase relationship between the top microphone and the bottom microphone is incredibly important. In this case, because that bottom microphone is at a 45 degree angle and it's a different mic, you might not always have to flip the snare bottom. Sometimes, however, depending on if it's fallen maybe a little bit down or if it's pointed straight up, you might, and you might get more low end that way. So make sure to check the phase on the bottom snare microphone to see what fits your situation the best. I just wanted to say this as well. Drum tuning can be incredibly difficult and especially if it's your first time getting into it and maybe you're not used to doing this kind of thing. It took me a long time to be able to replace everything and really get it where I wanted to consistently. So don't be afraid to say you're in the middle of it and it's just not sounding the way you want. Don't be afraid to take all the tension rods, pull them all loose and start the process over again. Go back to the beginning of this video, 
follow the steps step by step again, and eventually you will have great results every time. Thanks for watching this video. And hey, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things that you know how to do on YouTube. We hope this helps you at your church or venue. Thank <laughs> you.